Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, bless the name of the Lord for this wonderful afternoon. You are so very much welcome online church. I give glory to the name of the Lord. For and greetings from Miami Ministries International. Jesus mighty name hallelujah yeah I thank God yeah for today I'm standing in for the man of God yes he's committed somewhere but he's going to be with us tomorrow pastor Robert Wamala the assistant pastor amen but before I start off I want to respect and honor the anointing On your name in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, I don't as usual, may the Lord preserve you for us. Word is not empty, but wherever your word is set forth, Lord, it comes for a specific reason. And I pray, even as this word is uttered, Lord, I pray in Jesus' mighty name, may behind it come with healing, with answers to questions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I reduce that you may increase in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I just want to thank God so very much. Uh, for the title today in Jesus mighty name uh, entitled the message even today uh, you, you don't understand God's ways amen you do not understand God's ways I know there are certain uh, questions that people ask themselves and these questions are really tough questions they are as simple in a way but you know people usually battle with these questions within their within them and sometimes it's very difficult for you to air it out because you have been a Christian for a long time or maybe even a Christian in service. When I talk about s service, I, I mean we are all servants. Amen. You could be a servant of God in your workplace, a servant of God in church, a servant of God in, you know, in your neighborhood, wherever God has positioned you. But, you know, there are certain things that happen in your life and you have these questions and you are like God you know I do not understand your ways and you are confused amen there are places where people reach and you know it's like a person is lost in the wilderness in the forest and you don't know which way is out amen you don't you know you don't know the exact outlet amen so people you know battle with these questions and yet they are Christians they are known, even powerful, uh, you know, servants of God. But there comes a situation, there comes, you know, you being in a place where you don't understand God's ways. God becomes a mystery to you, yet you have been talking about him, you have been serving him, and sometimes maybe you have even 
had a testimony, you have, you have testified concerning what he has done, but then you reach a place and you don't understand his ways. Actually, people reach a place whereby, you know, they even question the existence of God. Yet they are servants of God. Amen. They are even going to Bible school. I've known of people who have attended Bible school with PhDs, but by the time they accomplish their studies, amen, their Bible school, they come out even more confused, amen, and question the existence of God. They don't understand. I, I don't know whether it's the studies that, you know, makes them more confused. I, I don't know what it is, amen. So, you could be there. I'm speaking to somebody out there. You've been a Christian for a very long time, but then you do not understand what's taking place. Maybe you are praying. The reason why sometimes these questions of doubt, you know, come within us, because it, it really takes a bold person to air this such a question out, amen, to come to a person and, you know, explain it to, or utter it out to them. Usually such hard questions, simple, but in a way hard, or they may even be, they may cause people to question, to doubt you. You know, there are certain questions that cause, causes doubt. Amen. So you've, you've been a servant of God and such a question like this, whereby, you know, it is very difficult for you to stand boldly and ask, do you know, I don't understand God. I don't, does God exist? Does God really hear me? You know, some, most of the times people battle with these questions within them. Because of circumstances, praise the name of Jesus. Because of, you know, the hard situations. And maybe you have done all it takes. You have done all it takes, believers, for you to, 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 to receive, you know, an answer from God. But everything is silent. So what are you going to do? I come to encourage someone out there, don't quit. God is still, you know, God exists. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it. Whether he has answered you or he hasn't answered you. Whether he has healed you or not healed you. Whether you are passing through tribulations or not. I just want to assure you, God exists. Until we come to that understanding that God exists, amen. Like Paul said, that whether in tribulations, amen, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to fear anything, amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Actually, let us go to, let us go to the book of, let's go to the book of Romans. Paul passed through such a situation which to any human being, amen, any normal person, you know, would cause doubt. Amen. It would cause doubt. For you to question, but God, after I've done all this, is this what, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to pass through? So, you could be passing through this place of doubt because of what is asked, I mean, you are passing through. And you do not have anybody you can open, not even your man of God. Amen. You even fear approaching your man of God or your woman of God. You even fear, you know, approaching your, your closest acquaintance, somebody who is so close to you. It, it could even be your wife. It could be your mother. It could be your father. Amen. So there, there are certain things that believers, you know, are, are very difficult to air out, but you are battling with it silently within you. I just come to assure you once again that whether you feel it or don't feel it, whether you see it or you don't see it, one thing I just want to assure you, God exists. Amen. With our human understanding, we may not understand his ways. We may not understand the way he does his things. We may not understand why he allows such a situation, you, you know, to, to, for you to pass through such a situation. Like Job. Amen. There was, you know, Job also had doubt. Yes, in the beginning, yeah, he knew that, yeah, God has given, God has taken, but I, I know this very God, you know, is going to come through for me. But even as time went on, there's some questions of doubt that he asked. 
So I do believe that there are people who are passing through a situation and you are doubting, you don't understand God. Actually, these are very dangerous questions. Amen. These are very, very dangerous questions, and if we don't deal with such questions, these are type of the questions that will draw people away. You see a person who has been born again and very fiery, but then getting out of the grace of God, and completely, and they don't want to hear about God anymore. Yet this why people on fire. Why is it that they reached that point? Because they had a challenge that caused them to ask themselves, Lord, I don't understand you. And do you know the meaning of this question? You don't, and I, I don't understand, you know? This is another way of saying, but do you exist? Are you really there? Are you as powerful as, you know, you, the Bible tells us, as the men and women of God tell us? You don't understand God. So I'm talking to a person, I'm speaking to somebody out there, you are impressed in a situation and you do not understand God. You do not understand his ways. Amen. Praise Jesus. Yes, this question, this statement can be applied in two ways. Two ways, amen. There are sometimes when God does something unto you and it overwhelms you, amen. Amen. And it causes you to, you know, it causes you also not to understand, you know, like it is like exalting him. It's also a statement of exaltation. God, I do not understand your ways. Because of the mega things that he has done, amen, for you, the great things that you, you've never, ever, you know, thought of. Like he says, call unto me, amen. And I will do great and mighty things, things you have never heard of, things you have never thought of. Praise Jesus. But right now, I am talking about the negative part of it, because I do know in, you know, that in, the, in the world, in the generation that we are in today, there are a lot of things that cause doubt, cause people to doubt God, even Christians, even Christians who have experienced who God is, who have experienced the hand of God, who have seen God, you know, even part the Red Sea before them. It happened even to the children of Israel. After seeing all these mega miracles, the hand of God upon their lives. But believers, even when, when they were going through to the place of their promise, the, the reason why believers, even their delay, was because of doubt. Praise Jesus. So, but Paul tells us, because Paul also passed through a situation like this, a situation that could have caused him to ask about God, I do not understand, are you, do you really exist? I don't understand your ways. Why all this pain? Amen. Why all this calamity? Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 8, from verse 35, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. By the time Paul, you know, uttered out this question, amen, Paul was passing through a very hard time, as we are going to see. But in spite of that, he made a statement and said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? What, in other words, what is it that can separate me from the love of Christ? He goes on to say, shall tribulation or distress, shall persecution or famine, because why tribulation and distress or persecution, famine, or, amen, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, amen? Why was he, why did he state these, you, you, you know, these things? It is because these are some of the things, believers, that take us away from the love of Christ. That take us away from that knowledge that God exists. When a person passes through a lot of tribulations, believers, it causes them, you know, to doubt who God is. Hallelujah. I remember I, the, the, there's a woman who was passing, actually she was diagnosed with cancer. But this was a very powerful woman of God. Hallelujah. 
it, it, it took the grace of God for her to come back. Amen? For her to come back to the Lord. Because even on, his sick, on her sick bed, she was like, but really, does God exist? She always asked the Christians who came to, you know, to visit her, does God exist? If he exists, why should he allow such a thing to, you know, to happen to me? Yet I've diligently served him. I've done all this. Amen. But Paul said that, what is it? Amen. Meaning that if tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword cannot separate him from the love of Christ, then it means that there's nothing else. Amen. If these cannot separate him from the love of Christ, then what else can separate? Hallelujah. So, for your sake, we are killed all day, he continues on to say, that we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Hallelujah. I just want to declare unto you that whatever you are passing through, you are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves us. Because in all this, Christ is still available, is still present. Amen. In all this, tribulation is not going to stop, does not stop Christ from loving you. Amen. So in all, whatever you are passing through, I just want to assure you that you are more than a conqueror, Bible says, through Christ who loves us. Bible continues on to tell us in Isaiah 55 and verse 8 to 9, it says that my thoughts are not your thoughts. Hallelujah. The way humans think is not the way God thinks. Amen. Actually, his thoughts are far, they are beyond, they are parallel. Amen. With, with our thoughts, they can't match together. God's ways are so different. The way you reason, the way you think, believers, is not the way God sees things. Hallelujah. That's why we should, you know, acknowledge his presence. We should acknowledge his victory that he offered unto us. Hallelujah. In whatever situation. So, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways. Nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher, amen, than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The way God does his things, believers, that's why Paul, we, we have read Romans. He said, that, what is it that can separate me from the love of Christ? Is it tribulation? Amen. Is it nakedness? Is it trial? Is it peril? Amen. What is it? Is it sickness? What is it that can separate us? Then he winds up by saying that, yeah, we are more than conquerors, conquerors through Christ who loved us. Meaning, believers, the things that you think, you know, that the enemy places before us and causes us to think, to doubt God, to question God's existence. I just want to tell us that these are the ways God actually, do you know that within a problem there is a solution? There are certain things that come in tribulations, and yet it's a solution. Amen? So the way God allows these things to, to come through to give you what you are asking for. Within every problem, if we intend, to, if we are critically, amen, look through this, whatever we pass through, I just want to tell us there is a solution. Paul passed through all this, but do you know what, what, what benefit came out of it? We are here. Through the tribulations, he stood and fought for the right cause. He stood and fought, hallelujah. He refused to doubt God in any way. And that is the reason why the church still exists. Hallelujah. So, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts 
than your thoughts as the heavens, the heaven and the earth will never meet. So the same applies to God's ways. God may allow anything to pass, anything that, yes, humanly speaking, causes doubt. Causes, you know, whether God exists. God causes, you know, uh, God, the doubt of God's existence. Amen? That is with the human understanding. But I just want to tell us that when we allow the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord to reason throughout, we will always see, you know, a solution behind every problem. Behind every tribulation. So what are you passing through? Are you at the place of work? Are you in your marriage? Are you in that community? Do you have a ministry? Do you have a church? There is something you are passing through. I just want to tell us that behind it, there is a solution. There is a solution. God promised the children of Israel, amen, but what they pass through, believers, amen, and then they, this, it's only the spiritual eyes that saw, you know, that end results. I remember a testimony of one, one man that I know is a man of God. Uh, one time he went to Germany. He, he stayed there for some time, actually, there, but then he came back to Africa, but his family remained there. Actually, all his children, he had three daughters, and they were all already adults, amen, old women now. So, but for him, he came back. He came back to Africa and, you know, he came back to minister to serve God from here. So, one time, God told him that, you no, know, one time, the daughter invited him because there was a seminar in the church that she used to, to, to serve from. So he goes back to Germany, and when he was in Germany, uh, he stayed there for almost two months. And then that very last week when he was now coming back to Africa, amen, God told him, because there was a need really in Africa, there was a need, and this need required a financial, uh, required financial help. So after he served, then the last week, when he was going, actually in his mind he knew, since I'm going to Germany, as I serve, you know, God is going to do all this. I'm going to get all the money. It's like the, con the concept we have. You think that when we go abroad, amen, that's where the money is. Sometimes it's not true, amen. Because God wants to prove himself that there is the God of the mountains, and like David said, and he's also the God of, of the valleys. So he goes, he serves, and nothing. The church did not contribute. The only thing they contributed is his ticket. Actually, they only contributed for him his ticket. No accommodation because he was residing at the daughter's home. But then in the night, God speaks to him and tells him that, you know, I'm going to give you a lot of money. Now, this was the last week. So he tells the daughter, do you know what God has said? God is saying that he's going to bless us with all the money that we need. Remember, that is the last week is now living. Until it came on the last day. And anyway, the daughter uh, was driving him to the, to the airport. And he was like, you know, God's ways are so different. Because in all his mind, he thought that the man is going to come. You know, either from the church or one of the church members or whatever. But then imagine, until the last day, the daughter drove him to the airport. Now, as he was in the airport, um, uh, you know, are they called escalators? This, yeah, I think they're called escalators. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, at the airport, the daughter drives, drives him, he enters, he checks in and everything with his bag. And he told the daughter, no, God spoke, we still trust in him. But do you know as he was in the, on the escalator, I mean, I think it was coming down now. Behind him. So, by mistake, one of the luggages from these people were behind him. They were a little distance from him. The luggage, you know, by mistake, it came rolling 
And everybody was shouting, so he didn't know what was happening. By the time he looked behind like this, and this was a very big bag. Amen. There were a lot of things, heavy things in the bag. So people were shouting, amen, even then behind, oh my God, oh my God. So he tried to look behind to see what was happening. Kumbe, the bag had already hit, reached him. I remember this was an old man. He was uh, around 70. So this bag just hit him. So he came rolling down his bag and all this, you know, this bag behind him, it hit him and it broke his backbone. So he reached down, the ambulance came in and everybody was, oh my God, amen. So this family, of course, you know, they, they followed him up, took him to the hospital and in the hospital, he calls the daughter. Of course, it took some time. The daughter expected him already to be on plane, on the plane, amen. So the daughter receives a phone after like three, four hours come this phone this is a strange phone so and this was the daddy's voice that you know I received an accident but within his mind it was like God but is this what the payment I've gotten from Germany <laughs> you know going back to Africa with a back a broken backbone yeah. but then do you know what happened this family took care of this man and you know they paid everything and also they, they paid how, how do they call it they paid him uh, amen actually much more money there's a way they call it amen they took him for treatment they treated him and paid him all the money even much more money <laughs> you know because those people health is considered something you know very, very valuable and very, they value health. What, when they talk about health, health is valued more than any other thing. So this man was paid, but in his pain, before all that happened, he was now in the hospital, this family now was running, it was a very wealthy family, by the way. The family was running up and down, he calls the daughter, the daughter was wondering, oh my God, and the daughter's question was God, but you had promised. Amen. That you are going to do great and mighty things. Is this what you have done? Amen. So she comes to the hospital and of course they take care of he stayed one more month because the injury was really you know, the, the injury was well, it had the backbone had, was really very affected. So he stayed for one month. But do you know this family, amen, the money they paid. But he was saying that within, that before this family, you know, you, you know, unveiled. Because, of course, the government came in, police came in, and whatever. So there was a, a benefit that this, you know, man had to receive. It, it was supposed to be paid. Amen. So he says that within one month, actually it was even less than a month, the backbone, imagine a 70-year-old, the backbone joint. The time he was telling us the story, he was, you know, perfectly well. Because in the dream, God came and actually joined the, the, the whatever the backbone, because it had really damaged it. The, the, the separation of the spinal cord was great. Amen. So he says that with all the pain, the pain was too much. But after a few days, God came and spoke to him and said that, this is what I was telling you. I, I told you that I was going to bless you. But you see where it passed. In a problem, amen, there is always a solution. So you may not understand God's ways. So he came back with all the money, even actually excess. Amen. Yes, it's true. I, I, I don't want God to bless me, that, that, you know, that way with an injury first. But what I'm saying that God is ways. God can use where you expect to get something. <laughs> I just want to tell us, you may get disappointed because that is your thought. But God is ways are so different. By the time, usually, by the time God blesses you, I just want to tell us, if you are not strong in your faith, such questions will come out, will come forth from you within your mind. 
God, I don't understand your ways. Are you? I, I've told us that, that, you know, this question is a question of doubt. Amen? So, this man, he was actually a bishop. He, was, he, he told us this story and said that in his pain, after all this happened, the ambulance came, you know, they were taking him, and within in the ambulance was God. Is this the promise that, was it you who spoke to me? Amen? Yes, it was God. So his ways, what am I trying to say? Why am I giving you this testimony? I'm giving you this testimony, believers, to tell you that God's ways are not your ways. So whatever you are passing through should not be the reason for you to doubt God, to question God, you know, to, to, to have these doubtful questions and statements. God still exists. Hallelujah. It says that my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The way God does things in our lives, amen, is so different. Amen? But what you have to do, he, he, was, he gave us a statement that even when he asked the question, those questions, amen, these questions of doubt, immediately, he came back and remembered Paul's statement. What shall take us from the love of God? Is it tribulation? Is it nakedness? Is it pain? So he started giving glory to the name of the Lord. And this family kept, kept on, actually, they had contact now with this family. God joined them together. This was a very, a, a multi-billion family. It was a multi-billion family. They were actually not even Christians. Can you imagine? For him, he expected his money to come from the church he had gone to minister to in Germany. But these people winded up giving him only ticket. Amen? On a ticket back to Africa. But you see God is ways. So whatever pain you are passing through, I just want to tell us that God is meaning it for good, for your good. Hallelujah. God has never, never desired us to end up, amen, in hell. Us to end, to wind up disappointed. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He has never. That's why the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, that call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call unto him. So in whatever you are passing through, please call unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep calling unto him. Keep calling unto the Lord. He says his ways are so different. Imagine this man, he built his church, he built an orphanage. Actually, he connected what God wanted. There was no way he was going to connect with these people. These people were just going on holiday. Amen? They were actually, they, they were going on holiday. Amen? So he connected God, him with this family. And it is this family, because of this family, that did not even know Christ. God connected them. They built up an orphanage. They did all whatever. You know, there are people who have money and they are only looking for where, you know, to, to place this money. They have a lot. So the only way that God could connect this family to this man of God was through this accident. <laughs> Praise Jesus. So a person who does not understand God, you know, you will cast him. Amen? You're going to curse God. But until you reach that place of confessing like Paul that who shall separate us from the love of Christ, hallelujah. Amen? Is it rejection? What is it? Is it famine? Is it death? Is it persecution? Until we reach that place. I just want to tell us we are going to see God. So let us call God in whatever circumstance. I don't know whether my time is up. Yeah, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, we would have gone on and on and on. But I've come to speak to someone. I've come to speak. I know you are there. Either you listen to this message later. Hmm? Okay. Praise Jesus.
I've come to speak to somebody. So whatever you are passing through, I just want to tell us that within every problem, there is a solution. Just ask the Lord to give you spiritual eyes. When we call upon him, amen, in whatever you are passing through, I just want to tell us you are going to see the hand of God. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, the Bible says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What then shall we say to these things? Amen? Paul, I mean, yeah, Paul, you know, speak, spoke these words, believers, because he was overwhelmed by the tribulation that he was passing through. Amen? Going, you know, before court, being stoned, in all these things, he said, what else shall we say if God is for us? He boldly actually spoke it before them. If God is for us, who can be against? So, believers, I just want to assure you that God is for you. Bible is telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 that no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Amen. No temptation has overtaken you, or no test, amen, that you are passing through, except that that is common to man. There's nothing that is new. What you are passing through, somebody passed through it and overcame. Hallelujah. As you are listening to me, I don't think there's any of you that has ever passed through what Paul passed through. Amen. The tribulations Paul passed through, you, you, none of us. Hallelujah. This man was a man of high caliber, man high, high status. Do you know what that means? And then you brought so low. But he said that in all these things, hallelujah, in all these things, I will still exhort the name of the Lord. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. Amen. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, amen? But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God is going to make a way of escape. What is it that you are passing through? God is going to make a way of escape, hallelujah, that you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah that you may be able to bear it. I just want to tell us that many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord will always deliver us from out of them. Amen. The afflictions are not going to cease to come. Hallelujah. So I'm speaking to you, you don't understand God's ways. I just want to tell us that we pray that the Spirit of the Lord opens your eyes, that you may understand His ways. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So, I come to tell you that fear not. Fear, because the Lord is with us. Do not fear. In whatever you are passing through, the Lord is with you. Be not dismayed. Amen. He has promised that he is our God. Hallelujah. He is going to strengthen us. Amen. He is going to help us. He is going to uphold us with his right hand. Hallelujah. God is going to uphold us with his right hand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let us now, believers, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Very important. In whatever you are passing through, ask God now, God, what is the meaning of this? What do you want me to learn from this? Let us learn and pursue the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Is going forth, he believers that is going forth should be established within us. Amen. That even as we go forth, we may be established in him. Hallelujah. For I just want to tell us, in just a short moment, the Lord will come unto us like a rain. Amen. Like rain comes after a very, very long, you, you know, time of, uh, a, a very long time of, uh, of, of dryness. Amen. 
God is going to come. You could be passing through a dry season right now. But I just want to tell us that even within the dry season, amen, the crops are going to blossom. Your life is going to blossom. The rain of the Lord, when it comes, sometimes it comes unexpectedly when you don't expect it. And usually that's why God's ways are so different from our ways. What you are passing through, believers, is a seed. Amen? And when you maintain this seed, believers, yes, on the foundation of the Lord, when the rains come, they are going to blossom something out of that. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6 and verse 3, that let us now, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. When the Lord starts showering down his rain upon your life, believers, upon that issue, upon that problem, upon that sickness, the Bible has told us that, oh my God, is going to come like a rain, hallelujah, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. The latter and the former rain to the earth, hallelujah. That is talking, of, the Lord is talking about harvest, he's talking about testimony. When his rain comes upon your life, when his hand comes upon your life, hallelujah. Amen? Praise Jesus. So, I am telling us, God's ways are perfect. Amen? And the word of the Lord is proven. He is proven. The word of God is proven. It's proof. Amen? That God is faithful. That God is going to see you through. Amen? Hallelujah. Remember, God will always remain a shield unto those who trust in him. Amen? Unto those who trust in him. You trust God to come through even in that situation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Lastly, let us look at, uh, let us look at uh, the book of 1 Peter and chapter 4 verses 12 to 13 as I'm winding up Bible says beloved do not think it strange concerning the fairy trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering that when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with the exceeding joy hallelujah so do not think it strange concerning those fairy that, that, that you're passing through or the fairy trials that you're passing through. Hallelujah. Bible has told us that you know, to the extent of that suffering, believers, it's also going to be the same extent or even more when the glory of the Lord comes unto you. So let us uphold the name of the Lord like a banner. Amen. You know when Soldiers go for war, they go for battle. That banner is lifted. Amen. The banner will always be lifted up. Remember, as the banner is lifted up, there are casualties. Amen. Remember, as the banner is being lifted up, the enemy is advancing. But you also advance towards them. Amen. You don't run away. Amen. As the banner of Christ is lifted up, believers, yes, you go forth. The, every battle, whether you have come out victorious, whether you have come out when you have overcome your enemy, still there are casualties. Amen. But the banner of your nation, the flag of the nation, will always be lifted up. Praise the name of Jesus. So I just want to tell us, let us lift up the banner of Christ. In whatever, even if it's dark, may the banner of Christ, hallelujah, be lifted up above your problems, above every tribulation, above every circumstance. Let the banner of Christ be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm speaking to you. You could be have a lot of questions within you and you know, you, you don't even know whom to share it with. 
or to share them with the men because they are embarrassing. You know, there are questions that are um, that embarrass, that are very embarrassing. Amen. Especially when you are, you know, a child of God. But I just want to tell us, even in that doubt, may you lift up the banner of Christ. And I just want to tell us, the Bible has told us that, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Hallelujah. God's glory is going to be revealed. I declare the glory of the Lord to be revealed wherever you are in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. That whatever, I just want, there's no testimony. We know there's no testimony without a test. Amen. So I pray and I declare, by the blood of the Lamb, I cancel and nullify every question of doubt in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Are you in the place of doubt? Are you in the valley of doubt? You are doubting whether God exists. You are doubting whether God will ever answer you. You are doubting whether God knows you. You are doubting whether God will ever, you know, be, come through for you. I just want to tell us that God's ways are not your ways. Hallelujah. Just keep on lifting up the banner of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I silence those voices within you. I cancel them by the blood of the living God in the name of Jesus. And I raise up, yes, the life-giving word in Jesus' mighty name. For the word of the Lord is living. The word of the Lord is active. The word of the Lord believers performs. The word of the Lord, hallelujah, it heals. The word of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. May the word of the Lord settle in your mind. May the word of the Lord give you the right answers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord comes through for you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name with exceeding gladness, with exceeding joy. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Last day, Jeremiah tells us, in Jeremiah 32, the reason I'm giving you all these scriptures, believers, is that remind God, tell God, isn't it you who said, Amen. Jeremiah 32 and verses 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from, from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me, and I will make an everlasting covenant. God had made, has made an everlasting covenant that he is not going to turn away, hallelujah, from doing good to us. Amen? So remind him, tell him, God, isn't it you who said that you made an everlasting covenant that you are not going to turn away from doing good unto us. Amen? Remind him in scriptures. Hallelujah. So I believe somebody has been blessed. Amen? Maybe a more especially a person who is asking God, you know, these questions of doubt, and you do not know whom to, to share this with. Hallelujah. But I just want to tell us that God is so faithful. He's going to come through for us. May God bless you so abundantly. I pray that the hand of the Lord be with you through this week. Greetings once again from our mom, Prophetess Agnes Emmanuel Avako, and the I Am Ministries International at large. See you again in the evening. The conference is going on. Hallelujah. My cup runneth over in the name of Jesus Christ. Come be blessed. At exact at 10, we are going to be with you. God bless you. Until we meet again tomorrow, shalom and bye-bye.